Welcome to Twin Pines 
episode three, we have returned. And thanks for all the subscriptions uh, sliding in tonight as we're about to go live. Wonderful to see all of you here. Uh, I, I loved what, uh, uh, sorry, Princess Bubblegum said, uh, the Church of Thirst. Uh, I think uh, <laughs> hit the nail on the head there. Uh, and uh, thanks for the first time chat, okay. Sangolia. So, <laughs> let's start off by introducing all of us, and then we will recap where we got to at the end of session two. Let's start with the shirtless spectacle, Morningstar. You have a soul. Well, howdy, partner. My name is Morningstar, but this evening I am Leviticus Lightning Blackthorn, or Blackhorn, rather, a Asterian storm witch with a fiery temper. <laughs> nice. Uh, let's go to Megan. Hi, I play Harriet, a Sasquatch empath. Um, basically just trying to be the therapist, mom friend of the group. Nice. Uh, Azalewin? And I'm Azalewin. I am playing Lana Belladonna, who is a Gorgon Green Witch, and let's just say that, uh, she's a little off the chain sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> or she's planning to be. <laughs> awesome. Anya? Uh, yeah, yeah, I am oh. playing uh, Rianne Atkins. She is a mandrake animist. Mm -hmm. um, she is a mm -hmm. small town girl home from the big city to figure out what's going on. Awesome. Yeah, and uh, just a little FYI, we have closed captioning on... Uh, the four members of our group that are not me. Um, we're having some issues with our first attempt at closed captioning, uh, so we should have some automatic closed captioning for you on there that you can turn on through Twitch. Uh, and they should carry through to YouTube as well. So, looking forward to... Hopefully that's helpful to uh, a lot of people. And uh, where we left off... The coven had returned to their hidden covenstead, a barn that is uh, a disused barn owned by Rianne's family, uh, where they met a mandrake witch who was a large mushroom. And she left a lot of mushroom babies in a big circle <laughs> around their covenstead. Uh, to give them some protection from uh, whatever might come calling. And so I think they were able to get their first good night's sleep after they had just successfully broken into the mayor's office to get information about who the mysterious, um, the mysterious elites that came into this tiny town of Tin Twin Pines. Uh, and had taken over, or were taking over, the mines. Nasty carpetbaggers. <laughs> and I think uh, Rianne got away with those documents, um, but had not had a chance to give them a solid look over. Um, so, uh, can you remember what it was that you found, what the paperwork was? I'm not like 100% sure. I feel like it was uh, paperwork to do with the mines and who had purchased them. And um, so now who is in ownership of the mines in the town? Yeah, I think it was on the mines letterhead, uh, Cobalt Mining Company. Um, and you saw some names on it and a whole bunch of signatures and that was why you decided to grab that piece of paper uh so i think what we're gonna need to do is sort of a little fortune roll to see if you all know anything about any of the names on there um the the one i'm gonna give you a freebie on though if i remember right on your coven sheet it says you have some positive and negative relationships with some of the uh groups so if you can read those off i'll let you know if, if any members 
of those groups, those factions, are um, are lit, are are there on the paper. Okay, we have a plus one with vulture votary. We uh, have a. I'll just go negative. through them one by one. Uh, the vulture votary does not. Not, neither the local ones that you've met, nor the ones that you knew of in Manhattan, neither of them seem to be represented in this contract. Okay. Uh, we have a minus two with the Grail Hunting Club. Uh, surprisingly, they are also not represented in this contract, but this is kind of outside of their realm usually. We have a plus one with Hollow Might. Yeah, they're not really the contract signing <laughs> type. All right. And I mean, they other... are, but they're not the... Yeah, that's true. You make a good point. Uh, the Fae are very <laughs> much a contract signing type. But yeah, not this kind of contract. <laughs> and we have a minus one with Destiny Research Group. Awesome. It's like they're involved. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the uh, 500 bits. Aww. Bloody Rose. Um, okay. The last faction you said was Destiny Research Group? Mm-hmm. Uh, you do your... Let's see. Uh, which of you do you think would have had a run-in with Destiny Research Group? They would certainly like to get their myths on any of you. Because of your heritages, um, who wants to volunteer for being the uh, the one that's had a run in with them? Maybe they were after my toe beans. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> uh, Harriet is a a very fluffy furred Sasquatch with gorgeous toe beans that any <laughs> uh, any faction would want to get their hands on. So yeah, I think they they put you through some of their. Um, testing equipment um and were you know uh unbeknownst to you that it was them and uh then they came to you with an offer that they wanted to pay you for samples of your fur and flesh and things like that um to which i'm assuming you declined uh depends if they can justify making a sweet toupee <laughs> <laughs> They they claimed that they were going to um, try to cure diseases that uh, afflict the mundane population using information they would gather from your heritage. Uh, but they never seemed to give any of the important details that would let you know whether they were actually on the up and up. Mm. Um, but you do remember the tester, the the individual that more or less tricked you into uh, getting involved with them in the first place. Um, and his name was... His name was Gerald Benson. I remember being in his office and seeing that he had a lot of uh, degrees and things like that on his wall. But you recognize his uh, signature and his name uh, at the bottom of this document, along with about eight other signatures. So let's do a two-die fortune roll and see if you recognize any of the other. Oh, I screwed that up. <laughs> it's the old code, isn't it? It's just in the uh, Tuesday stream channel. Oh. It should be it. It's just exclamation mark X F. Yep. So I'm not actually putting in the number for X? Yeah, you put in uh, the number two. No, because I did that the first time. Exclamation mark it was two. in the wrong channel, that's all. Oh, my goodness. You were in general. Uh, 
Yeah, the bot doesn't watch general. It only watches our uh, Sorry. channel. It's okay. It happens <laughs> to the best of us. Uh, just so anybody knows, if you're interested in running uh, any of these games on uh, Discord with your groups, uh, I can give you access to our Discord dice bot, which apparently hates Harriet very, very much. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, yeah, the rest of the names... Uh, you see them both written and signed, and you don't recognize a single member among them. Uh, they all have, like, disgusting rich people names, though, like Ellen Muskrat and things like that. <laughs> oh, it's because it's two ones. Is it, like, really bad for me? <laughs> I just can't read. <laughs> <laughs> You lost your ability. Oh no. <laughs> oh no, it it applies to the whole group. So yeah. Um yeah, you all scour yeah. it over and you don't have any real access to like the internet or anything like that for um getting any of that information. So uh unless somebody wants to call in an NPC to see if they can get some extra information. Well, uh I have a local moonshiner as a um, contact, and he might know, you know, where the money's coming from. Oh, sure. Yeah, that would make sense. Yeah, so basically saying, okay, uh, none of these names mean anything to us, but yeah, let's see if we can get some extra information. Yeah, I like that. Um, yeah, what, what do you want to use to get in contact with them? Do you want to call them over to your Kevinstead, or do you want to go and visit them? Um, I don't think they're going to come anywhere. They generally stay where they are. Yeah. And, and also they collect your... information that way. Yeah, and your covenstead is hidden, so it's probably a good idea not to invite people, even if they are your allies. Yeah, so you have a interesting history with this uh, Moonshine Runner. Um, <laughs> do you want to all head over there together? Um or make the trip separately. Um, anybody mm -hmm. is welcome to come. I would gladly meet a moonshiner. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, you recognize the name as a local, but you didn't know they were running moonshine. Didn't have a very close relationship with them. <laughs> Who else wants to go? I'll go. Uh, I got a question, though. Is, yeah. is Shemoth still here? She sure is. Or yep. Uh... <laughs> Hang on, I think I came up with a name for her. Oh, <laughs> Not Shemoth? <laughs> Not Shemoth. Oops. The whole bunch of JavaScript code that just popped up on the screen. <laughs> Here we go. One crazy ass name. And what was the Moonshiner's name? Did we have that? Uh, Sam. Sam. Uh, Athalia. Athalia. A T H A L I A. Right. Yeah, do you want to um, have her come along? Yeah. Cool. Fun. Just trying a little flashlight and get her to chase me. <laughs> <laughs> we'll carry a candle just so she can follow the flame. She goes where the light is. Awesome. And Levi as well? Uh-oh, I think we've lost your oh. audio. Lean closer to the mic, maybe. Um, yes. Oh, there you go. Well, there's something. <laughs> well, it doesn't like my cowboy voice. It's too deep, too low for oh. it to pick up. <laughs> <laughs> Was that an affirmative? Oh yes. Okay. Awesome. Um, in that case, uh, Anya, why don't you go ahead and roll, uh, two dice for your ally? See what they know. Is it a fortune roll? It is. Okay. Oh, actually, no, sorry. Uh, it would be a gather information roll, and you get to choose the action. And you get um, to add one die. I guess I will go with a study. Okay. Because I'm wanting them to study this. Okay, sounds good. You can do a study roll plus one die. That's gather information.
Hmm. That's okay. not bad. Yeah, no, that's not bad at all. That's a five on those dice. Um, throw a die myself. Okay. Um, the Moonshiner does recognize one name. Uh, it is uh, Wayne Jeffries and recognizes him from the Orders board. Hmm. So the Order and Destiny Research Group together again. So that is uh, a little on the frightening side. But um, out of all the names, that's the only one they recognize from the Order. The rest they recognize from Destiny Research Group as well. Okay. And there are three others that they don't recognize at all. Okay. Uh, and it is at that time that you hear some uh, pickup truck horns that are programmed to play some southern music. Uh, the, uh, the Dixie song uh, coming up and driving around the building. The only thing more tacky than the car horn that, <laughs> that Seth had. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah and you hear them yelling out the windows of their car um the building that you're in is a big warehouse and no windows that go to the outside but apparently someone followed you sorry sam what is outside of the warehouse? A uh, big parking lot that's completely empty, uh, and then a um, salvage yard is all along one side of the building. So this building might have been part of the salvage yard at some point in the past. Does Sam have any uh, customers scheduled to do a pickup today? Nope, today was uh, purely running the bathtubs. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, they uh, you hear a gunshot and a uh, hear a bullet bounce around uh, inside of the room a bit. Dang. That doesn't seem like a safe thing to be doing around stills. Nope. <laughs> no. It, it, Came in really high on the building. Um, it definitely wasn't intended to um, hit anybody that was, you know, down on the lower level where you were all at. So maybe, maybe something we... like a warning shot. Maybe we should go see what they want. Yeah. All right. Um, do you just want to walk right out the front door? Um. Uh... I can use my personal projection because I can still see and hear everything. Absolutely. That. So I could go out and worst case scenario that that version of me gets shot. <laughs> yeah, bullets will go right through you, so um, mm -hmm. not a problem. Okay. So that's one essence. I don't know if I have to roll anything for that. Nope. Uh, you just tell me where you want your projection to appear from. Um, I want it to just be inside the door, so then they'll literally walk out like okay. their hands up. Okay. They'll just walk straight through the door with their hands up. Yeah. And hope that uh, nobody <laughs> notices that they're not real. Uh, yeah. Let's do a one die fortune roll because I think they're paying pretty decent attention. So there is still a chance that they won't notice. See if this one goes just as miserably as the first one. Hey! Oh, so bad. That's not bad at all. All right. Okay. Yep, I think uh, a couple of people probably spot uh, because um, 
when you walk out or when your double walks out and you can see out into the area, you can see four pickup trucks um, that are all like several, like two of them are doing donuts opposite each other, um, skidding around the parking lot. One of the other ones has pulled up to the front and there are two guys hanging out of either side of the pickup truck with shotguns. And they're pointed straight at the door. Uh, but luckily, um, none of them that are pointed directly at you noticed uh, that you came straight through the door. <laughs> um, I'm for Pete's sake. <laughs> <laughs> um, but as soon... So what do you say or what do you do when you um, come out? The fuck? <laughs> 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 no need to shoot boys what's this all about all right um i think i'm gonna say that you see some of the symbols painted on the uh pickup truck and you immediately realize who you're dealing with mm -hmm. um they have a silver uh grail symbol painted on the front of the pickup truck that's pointed right at you with a targeting rectangle behind it. So, it looks like uh, it's Grail Hunting Club. How many are there? Uh, there are four pickup trucks, uh, but it's not mm -hmm. clear exactly how many people are among them. Your guess is probably eight minimum. Unless there are people in the backs of some of the trucks. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think with a five rather than a six, uh, as soon as they see you, they turn toward you, and the two that are hanging out of the lead pickup truck uh, yell, There she is! And the other two trucks skid to a halt, and then they open fire on your illusionary copy of yourself. Okay. So, at this moment, because I'm going to try to keep a little bit of a farce up, I mm -hmm. go ahead and I, I'm going to put my hands on the ground, and I'm going to use plant growth uh, with my focus and a little energy, and I'm also going to push myself mm -hmm. to get all the weeds in the area to grow up like a wall and just kind of like block the front of the building a little bit, and also that'll give the apparition the... Um, double time to disappear, I guess, and then it might hold up the, yeah. the illusion a little bit better. Okay. But that just, I think that's just a focus roll, plus I'm going to use two willpower to up that. Okay, awesome. Uh, that'll give you either plus one die or increased effect. I think there's I'll do already, another die, just because I need more focus. <laughs> there's already ivy, like, growing sort of up the walls, so, um, yeah, it, it's not. There's um, there's no dearth of plants there um, for you to control. Okay, yeah, I just want them to all grow and grow fast and grow big. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right in front of us, please. Uh, yes, it's a complete success. Awesome. <laughs> Viking says, as an Appalachian, I have to say we're not this trigger happy in real life. These are not. These are not your average Appalachians. <laughs> uh, these are. Uh, these are some out-of-towners uh, who have all come to hunt the uh, Sasquatch that they've received word it has been hanging around this area. So Harriet coming out was exactly what they hoped to see. They were They're ready. here for my luscious locks and delectable toe beans. <laughs> <laughs> Any jelly bean on the business. Toe bean oh. soup. <laughs> okay. Um, Azalyn, you can uh, describe uh, what that looks like. Yeah, so I go ahead and I, I put my hands on the ground and I just will the word growth so much into it that every plant and like weed that's around us just immediately gets bigger and fatter and intertwines just so we have like a little bit of a <laughs> yeah. of a blockade between us around our the whole warehouse. So Yeah, uh, the shotgun blast is absorbed into the plants. And they, at this point, don't even know that the Sasquatch was... Um... I also thank them. <laughs> thank you, <please. laughs> Awesome. 
uh, yeah, you can hear uh, major commotion outside. They they stop firing, um, and yeah, you can hear them getting out of their vehicles and moving around. But um, unless uh, you want to do something else, you're not going to be able to see what they're doing. Um, what is the range on my majestic presence? The one that affects the minds of people of lower or equal tier. Mm -hmm. um, and would that apply to these? I think it affects one person at a time unless you increase it with essence. So, um, if you wanted to get everybody, that would cost you six essence. Or no, I don't think it's that bad. Well, it depends. If there are eight people out there, or if there are, you know, like 15 or so. Um, if you want to be completely safe, six essence will get them, will get them all. Okay. Uh, sure, why not? We'll pop six. Okay. Uh, so and do I have to do any kind of roll for it? I don't think there's a roll for that one. Um, you just uh, declare, like, in, in in what way you appear majestic to them, and I'm assuming you're going to step through the plants to become uh, visible to them again. Mm -hmm. uh, step yeah. through. So, uh, what is it that you look like, or uh, what are you emanating that makes them all unwilling or um, un unable to cause you harm? Baby it's panda. Do a half lip. <laughs> <laughs> Did I hear baby panda? <laughs> <laughs> they can't shoot a baby panda. <laughs> I think you'll find these people very much cool. <laughs> so do I just have to, like, does it just make me appear different to them? Or yeah. am I just affecting them mentally? How does this work? It, you're affecting them mentally to make yourself appear um, far more grand and untouchable than you really are. And it's affecting their minds. So you can just describe how you look to them. Um, you know what? I guess seven pound, five ounce baby Jesus <laughs> <laughs> covered in hair, though. <laughs> Sasquatch Jesus. Sasquatch Jesus. Where's does the first start and the toga end? <laughs> <laughs> um, um, yeah, you could do you could be like angelic and larger than life. Um, you know, it look like you have such thick skin that their bullets can't penetrate you. You know, it, it's really completely anything you want. I think just make myself look really puffy. Puffy? <laughs> and luscious. So I'm just a giant hairball walking towards them so they can't necessarily see, like, where my mm. arms and everything are. Like, I'm just so fluffy. I'm just a mess. So mm -hmm. They don't know where to really aim. All right. Cute. <laughs> yeah, so King Kong, if uh, it was, like, beautiful hair rather than giant size. Brazilian blowout kind of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Uh, we are going to take a quick break, and then we will be right back to continue.
welcome back. We are back, and uh, Harriet is uh, the most majestic, fluffy, <laughs> um, powerful uh, um, Sasquatch you can possibly imagine. That ever squatched. <laughs> that ever did squatch. And uh, Rail Hunting Club is completely convinced that you are effectively indestructible uh, in your current form. You sort of, you know, smash the ground as you uh, step out from uh, between the, the weeds that have grown up in front of the building. Um, and yeah, they, they see you and they throw the uh, car that's in the very front into reverse and start backing away from you. Um, and what? Oh, uh, what is anyone else doing? Can I aid this effect by um, awakening the spirit of the weed so they can part like the Red Sea in front of uh, Harriet? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. The, I don't think there's any role for that either. So yeah, that's totally fine. Yeah, they're the uh, weeds and, and everything. It's the reed sea. <laughs> <laughs> they, we didn't do Jesus, we're just doing fuzzy Moses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they know to part for any of you um, as would be realistic and then to move back in to uh, conceal the doorway. Yeah, well, sounds good. When they when they part for Harriet, I, I'll just use my regular uh, plant control for my grimoire abilities just to tell the dandelions to release all their seeds. So <laughs> as she, Ooh, as it's like a yeah. poof, like a cloud. <laughs> awesome. Spirit of the weed. Yeah, that was the 20th. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, so they're backing away and um, you hear, you know, shouting among them um, and they're Trying to make a determination of what to do next, but they they look like they just there's they're not going to do anything directly against that double of you that's uh, standing out there in the in the parking lot with them. So they are kind of at a standstill, trying to make a determination of what to do next or where to go next. And you want to do anything to them? I would assume that Harriet from inside the building is able to tell the rest of you sort of what's going on. So even though you can't see out, you can see you you have a pretty good idea of what's actually going on out there. Um, let's see. Can I want to like kind of give a little threat a little bit mm -hmm. with my plant growth again. So I guess I'll, but I won't get the extra diet this time. I'll just do a regular focus and then use one essence. Okay. I want to take one of the vines and see if I can kind of push one of the cars up a little, like, like, Hey, get out of here <laughs> now before we do more. <laughs> but, uh, yes, yeah, so I'll just do okay. one die on a focus really. Okay. If I can actually do my exclamation point here. <laughs> there we go. Oh, that did not do well. Okay. <laughs> my volume wasn't strong enough. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I, I think uh, maybe you, because it's a parking lot and there are some weeds growing up through it, so you, you kind of think there's a little bit more sort of mass under there for you to work with, um, but maybe it just it doesn't quite turn out. So your, your weeds kind of grab a hold of a tire and start trying to push it, and it's just it's it's not enough to make a a big difference. Um, One little daffodil is just pushing on the tailpipe. <laughs> <laughs> gets singed. Trying its best. Yeah. <laughs> oh, um, I have I have a question. Uh -huh. um, so, um, Lana launched all those spores from the plants. I have lesser illusion. Could I potentially use that and? on the spores to make it seem like I'm flinging black widow spiders at them. Um yeah. Or is that not work because um, that's evolution of me? Yeah, I, I was to gonna do. say um it's not just that, but um you can't generally cast spells through the illusion. Okay. Um but um 
If also, I go outside behind I, this plant wall, would that be make me close enough? Like if I leave uh, the building, yeah, I would say else? because of the the fact that it's awakened. Yeah, if you were physically out there, um, it could part for you to sort of stick your eyeball through and be able to see out there. Um, but uh, we do have to deal with the consequences of the two uh, mm -hmm. first. Okay. Um, and that is um, the um, you see in the back of, well, so we're, we're in controlled right now. So one of the things that's going to happen is we're going to go up to risky from controlled. Um, this, the, the time that it took you to do that uh, gave them a little bit more time to sort of recombobulate themselves and figure out what they're going to do next. And you see that they um, take a uh, individual that's hogtied in the back of their pickup truck and they slightly untie them. They untie their legs and then stand them up in the back of the pickup truck. And then that person starts to chant and cast a spell um, under duress, obviously. Can I have all the flowers release their pollen to the point to where, like, it chokes them up? Yeah. To like, like, it's allergies, it, like, his nose starts running and everything like that. And I, I guess that would just be the regular plant control, wouldn't it? Just have them all do that again? Yeah, it sounds like it could be, like, a mix of plant control and that snake root kiss that you have. Mm -hmm. um, because then, yeah, you could, you could um, do one and then the other to... Uh, effectively touch somebody from uh, range. Yeah, having... so uh, yeah, basically, what, I guess what I would do then is walk outside to touch one of the vines because it has to be for my body. Mm -hmm. And um, I'll I'll go ahead and spend two essence for that to do the paralytic. Okay. And just like, I'll, I'll put um, the toxin into the vines and stuff so that way any spores and stuff that were released will carry that to them. Okay. Um, and just forcefully do it. So I'll do that. And I guess, would I need to do any rolls for that? Yeah, generally you do something like a target, unless you have another idea about how you'd want to get that it does. Say, I would say finesse maybe a little, because that's a little bit of a finessing, I would feel like to, because that's like I'm doing multiple things. But I can do, I don't have anything in target, so I would have to um, maybe take a fey bargain. <laughs> Yeah, you could spend willpower uh, to get extra dice or a fey bargain, uh, one or the other. Um, let's see, finesse. Yeah, maybe if you just, um, it's just like one plant that opens up and then you try to get that one plant's specific, uh, you know, like dandelion stuff to go directly into that. Let's, see, let's, let's do a read, so because those cat of nine tails have a lot packed in those little those guys so nice. i would say i would probably yeah, i would go finesse like some of the cat of nine tails that sounds good awesome to pop so and i will spend uh two willpower to get it grab, grab an extra die with that too so okay. that'll put me up to three and it's like i don't like it. a paralytic poison you said yeah and okay. i spent three or two essence for that okay uh so that will end up being three die nice yeah, complete success. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, do you want to describe that? Yeah, so basically I, I walk out the front door and I find one of the reeds and just so the poison can get from uh, my body to them, I go ahead and I poke my, I like stab my hand onto one of them. Mm -hmm. And so the poison goes from my, my blood down into the plant and then the plant basically grows forward looks like it's growing but it's like really traveling through the ground forward and then all the cat and nine tails uh pop open and release uh instead of regular white puffy particles they're just red particles nice. and they, it just goes with the wind and just <laughs> goes right at them all right yeah uh, it goes right up into the witch's face um as they're chanting um and just straight up into like their sinuses and stuff and they start coughing and and uh, fall to their knees, um, and you hear a gun cock, and 
one of the guys standing over them puts his shotgun right to their head and uh, kills them. Well, that was an extreme retaliation to them being paralyzed. <laughs> yep, he's like, if you're no, if you're like this, you're of no use to us, and just executes her right there. Well, rest in peace. <laughs> Um, okay. The, uh, however, they, they are not willing to do anything to Harriet, and Harriet is the only one they see, so I think at this point they think that they've overplayed their hand, um, and you see the trucks squeal tires as they all try to leave. And good riddance! <laughs> And can I do the spirit companion twin souls thing? Yeah. And I want to uh, get the spirit of the moonshine. Okay. And I want to get them all blackout drunk so they oh. can't leave. Okay. And, um, yeah. Okay. Then I will retaliate. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, let's see. So I... that is... An essence. I'm trying to read this tiny print. Uh, yeah. An essence to materialize the spirit. Um, yeah, I, I think it would be able to go do them all sort of one by one. But I guess if you went from driver to driver, uh, yeah. Or, um, and I think this is well within the powers of an animist. You could go the wild magic route, and I think that would get them all at the same time. It'd be a much more solid. Uh, Especially since they're driving off quickly, um, yeah, that might make if if that's uh, a yeah, no, no, idea. I don't want them to leave. This that's yeah. unacceptable. Yeah, I um, think that that sounds great. Yeah, I'll do a wild magic. All right. Uh, what and is... once they're uh, knocked out, we kill them, right? Yeah. Nice. Okay. Uh, you can so... shoot all of them. <laughs> well, I was hoping to do it while they could still fight back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, okay, so um, for Wild Magic, we need to know your aspect and how it applies to what you're doing. Let me see. My aspect. Where are you at, aspect? Is the moon. Ooh. Oh, so... this is moonshine. Exactly. Perfect. Okay, that's one die. Uh, your heritage? Uh, Mandrake. Okay, and you're a fern mandrake. Mm-hmm. Hmm. I mean, that's a plant. It is, is moonshine plant-based? Yeah, pretty alcohol. Yeah, that. I, I would assume so. <laughs> I'm just like, I don't know. Like, <laughs> yeah. yes. <laughs> <laughs> it, the problem with, yeah, not... Actually, really. that's not true. I'm entirely certain there is one alcohol that's made out of meat, but I don't know which one. <laughs> Wow, that sounds disgusting. Indeed. <laughs> and your, uh, so that's your heritage and your aspect, and your, um, an animist. Mm -hmm. And you're awakening a spirit, a very powerful mm -hmm. spirit. That is a three die wild magic roll. Mm -hmm. That's maxed out. Let's do it. So that's, um, exclamation point three W. Do it, do it, do it. You're looking for a six. It's just grabbing my signature. Yes! <laughs> and you have a six. All right. Uh, so it goes exactly the way you wanted it to. Why don't you describe exactly what happens here? Um, let's see. I'm about to say Hollis. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Rianne uh, runs over to the bathtub and... Um, she uh she's not gonna stick her fingers in the moonshine because that would be rude. But <laughs> <laughs> she's gonna uh breathe in a big deep breath of the fumes mm -hmm. and um basically will the spirit of the alcohol and the fumes and everything like that to wake up and um go after these guys. And so when she exhales the fumes it looks like a giant fog and it uh, flies out of the building and then just kind of covers the vehicles as they're trying to leave. 
in a fog and everybody starts getting all swervy and then they stop. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think it comes out of all the vents on the front part of the building. So it just like leaks out and it's like these uh, fog tentacles that all reach out and like grab a hold of all the vehicles. And, yeah. <laughs> um, and um, yeah, I think one of them immediately um, swerves and crashes into a nearby building. Uh, and the other three just come to immediate stops, and as the fog clears, you can see um, all of these uh, rednecks out there um, stumbling around with their uh, half-cocked guns in their hands, um, just sort of stumbling around on the street, blocking uh, an intersection. So what I would like to do maybe instead of shooting all of them is to shoot most of them and then I want to cut the trigger fingers off of the rest of them on both of their hands <laughs> so they can't shoot a gun again. <laughs> and then I want to take all of their clothes and key their trucks. <laughs> and One not uh, time. <laughs> your name into their leather seats. Yep. <laughs> Does anyone have a Louisville slug? <laughs> oh, actually, I think Harriet does. Oh, yeah. The baseball bat? Yeah. yeah, we're going to bust up their trucks. Well, maybe next time they'll think before they hunt. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to tell Harriet about Sasquatch, Sasquatch martial arts. It's what? very much It's very much like Wookiee martial arts, where you grab a hold <laughs> of somebody's arms and you pull. And just pull. Oh. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> yeah, I was like, do you really need a baseball bat with a with a nail in it when you can literally rip people's arms off of their bodies? Mm -hmm. Oh my god. <laughs> Start He's waving with your fingers off. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. My span of my arms got both their fingers just stretch. Yeah. <laughs> Nasty. Lower. Okay. So yeah, um I think whatever you all decide to do. Um, we can just take as red because they are completely incapacitated. Um, let's, uh, I, I feel like everybody's had a chance to do something except Morningstar. So why don't we give Morningstar, uh, first, um, first bash or, uh, however they, <laughs> Levi decides to act. Must have been at this point, I'm, uh, uncertain. Mostly because it seems like sports might be starting to shoot them up. <laughs> but I'll uh, put a bullet in any one you point at. <sighs> well, you definitely the one that the shot the witch. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. Okay. Well, I will happily exit the building and uh, <laughs> print my 44. And aim at the offending party. Okay. Yep. Yeah, um, we can. I think we can uh, take the rest off screen. It is assumed <laughs> that you uh, dispatch them all in short order. Are there any of them that you want to, uh, you know, take prisoner or anything? Um, or I got rope. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, why don't we take one prisoner and then get some information on why they're here and who told them that we were going to be here and that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because that would be good information. Sure. Um, let's see. Uh, as you are all wrapping that up, you notice that... Let me get to my notes. Um, you notice that three, well, you hear the sound of helicopters coming from the distance, uh, and heading toward you, and then past you, and over to the mountain nearby. Um, and it looks like they're going to the highest peak of that mountain. It's three oh. troop transport helicopters, and you recognize the sigils on the outside of the helicopters as being Obsidian Council. The Obsidian Council is a well-known faction, but they're um, 
generally not a faction that witches are at all worried about. They are concerned only with mundane. Oh yeah, justice. the people. <laughs> yeah, they are the justice, the the standard police, not the witch police. Um, okay. They're, they're like the still Red cops. Watch. Yeah, they're like the Red Watch, except uh, without uh, all the uh, special abilities. And without the really good technology, too. So, so should we start shooting at them? <laughs> uh, they're flying over your head, uh, you know, a few uh, hundred feet at least, or a few hundred meters at least. But um, Levi, obviously, uh, if he wanted to, uh, would have no problem with that distance. Um, Perhaps not with the 44, but a uh, yeah. little bit of lightning might take one of them down. If we so want. Welcome back, Mobo Plush. Glad your class went well. Uh, so, yeah, you see them going overhead. They seem completely unconcerned by what's happening below. And they just are going to pass right over you if you uh, let them. Can I uh, send up my cicada to kind of attach itself to uh, one of the helicopters and just see what they can see once they get there? Sure. I kind of want to know where they're going, why they're going to the top of the mountain. Yeah, we can uh, we can do uh, some kind of roll on that um, in a little bit. Yeah, so. literally bug them. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, <laughs> them hazard boys, them dang broke the masquerade. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, um, yeah. Um, who do you want? You just want to take in one of the random uh, rail hunting club people, or maybe the one that executed the witch. We killed that, that guy's got to die. Oh, okay, you could torture him. Ooh. Yeah, technically, I can use my snake root kiss to mm -hmm. give them perception altering and really give them some uh, bad trips. <laughs> yeah, you could make them think that you're their superior officer and. Uh, they need to debrief you. You yeah. could grow a rose vine covered in thorns straight up through. Ooh, the good ideas. <laughs> Either that or I can take one of my Venus flytraps off my shoulder and, <laughs> and overgrow it. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Chop Easy. that. Either way, let's get one in here. <laughs> All right. So, um, are you going to bring them into uh, the Moonshiners building and interrogate them there, or... Maybe uh, back to the coven? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I don't want to take him in there. Well, we don't want to break his business more. <laughs> in that case, we should probably roll on uh, the Cicada's uh, action roll so that you get that information first before you make that decision. Okay. So. And of course, before I leave, I told the plants to just go back to normal so they don't have to worry about all that gardening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would... you gotta get a weed eater out there. Yeah. <laughs> all right. What okay, do you, what do you use want to use for that? Um, let's see. I guess that would be like. I'm going to go with study so we can get more detail about what's happening uh, at the top of the mountain when he gets there. Yeah, that, that makes perfect sense. So, uh, yes. I'm going to spend uh, two willpower and push myself for an extra die. Awesome. That'll be a gather information. So, exclamation point, number of dice G. Somehow, Chad is now talking about stamping. And by somehow, I mean, it's my well, I did the thing, and it didn't yeah, do the thing. I noticed that. I wonder hmm. if our uh, our little our guy dice went to go sleep. to sleep. Yeah. Somebody oh, poke it with a stick. <laughs> Somebody <laughs> poke the bot. Um, <laughs> do something. <laughs> well, how about this? We'll take a quick break, and we'll come right back and get that roll resolved. <laughs>
right, welcome back to Twin Pines. Uh, Anya was just about to roll for Rian's gather information check uh, on the uh, cicada that had followed Obsidian Council back to wherever it was they were headed. Oh, and I also thank wanted to say thank you for the purchase of uh, the Children of Midnight uh, bundle. Uh, that somebody just purchased at an extreme, an, an extremely uh, generous price point. So thank you so much for that. All right, Anya. Okay. Be good. Now that we have our dice bot running again. <laughs> All right. Okay. So that's a decent amount of information. It's uh, oh, standard. You get good details, and clarifying and follow-up questions are okay. possible. All right. So two of the tr troop transports um, hover for a few minutes as the first one lands. When it lands, uh, your cicada is able to get... Uh, you could either choose for it to go get more information on the first one that lands, or it could stay back and uh, watch from afar. So. Your choice. Um, I guess it would probably uh, be good to stay with the one that landed, just to see what's going on. Okay, so just uh, get information from afar for the first yeah. one. Okay. Um, the cicada sees um only um six people exit that first troop transport. And none of them are wearing any kind of Obsidian Council um, clothing or armor or carrying weapons or anything like that. Um, okay. And you see that as they come out of their uh, helicopter, um, they're carrying like wine glasses and um, they look like they just got out of a luxury uh, transport. Um, and. As they head toward a mine entrance, you see a bunch of people in hazmat suits with the Destiny Research Group logos on them uh, come out of the caves and greet them. And then those people are given hazmat suits as well to put on. So they set down their wine glasses, things like that, and uh, suit up. And then shortly thereafter, the other two transports land, and they are both carrying 18 soldiers. Okay. Hmm. Are the soldiers gearing up in hazmat? No, they're, um, they seem to be taking up posts outside of the mine entrance. Are there uh, workers in the mine at the time? You don't see any. Uh, you also don't see Forval around at all. Are there supposed to be workers in the mine right now? Is it like a work day yeah, time? it is a work day. You, you remember hearing the uh, mine uh, alert uh, sound, the mine horn. Uh, go I'm going to go morning. to work horn. <laughs> okay, but there's no miners there currently. There's no evidence that any of them are there. Okay. Is this the entrance that we went in when we snuck in? It is. Okay. And Forval's not there. Forval is nowhere to be seen. Poor Forval. <laughs> um, maybe he has the day off. Maybe. I would hope. <laughs> Poor guy. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm going to have <laughs> uh, Cash come back. And um, maybe we try to uh, contact Forval to see why none of the miners are at work today. Sure. Uh, do you all want to uh, stay at the uh, moonshine place with all the dead bodies outside? Or do you want to move on? I say we put all the bodies in a truck and let the moonshine guy drive the truck uh, somewhere else. 
eight health left here for me to shoot. So over the wall, Sam's good. Tie his hands to the wheel, work on the pedal, and send him on his way. Okay. I do want to take the witch's body and um, give her a proper burial. Okay. We don't um, have to do it right this minute, yeah. but I don't want her to be go back to wherever these guys would take her. I think Sam uh, knows a place where he can hide a body for you. Okay. Um, Moonshiner knows yeah. how to commit crimes. Yeah. What? <laughs> he, he walks out through the back door of the building that he uh, makes the moonshine in and uh, goes over to a car, a rusted out car that's just on the other side of the fence, a hole cut through. He sort of elbow drops the back of the car and the hood or the trunk pops up and it's completely cleaned out on the inside um, and nice and you're able to deposit the nearly headless corpse of the witch into the uh, trunk of that car. So if that gives you any idea of how uh, brutal Grail Hunting Club is, that is uh, not an incorrect assumption. Okay. All right, let's find Forval. <laughs> how would you yeah, like to go? Our little guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Forval, the uh, mine for foreman. Uh, if, uh, just to recap, is a, um, he was always a little too small to go into the mines, um, so they made him a foreman, so that, um, he could still do the work of the, you know, that everyone did in the area, um, still felt like he was, uh, making a, a contribution, and, uh, yeah, he ran, he runs the elevators for the workers to come up and down at the beginning and end of the shift, and he uh, is the one that runs the, the whistle or horn that lets everybody know when shifts end and things like that. And he's been very, I guess very... we have child labor laws. <laughs> <laughs> he's been he's very, very helpful to you guys in the past. I feel like every time he does it, he's like, I helped! <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, that, yeah, that sounds like him. Alright. Uh, so yeah, how do you all want to try to get a hold of him? Uh, none of you well, know I his, assume... like, family information. I mean, he's our <laughs> coven contact, so we I assume that oh, we have a true. way to get in contact with him. Yeah. yeah I can true. also use read whispers if need be. Yeah. Um, I think um, since he is the coven contact, if you wanted to do read whispers... Well, actually, I think that's automatic. You just basically name the person, Lance will find them. So, yeah. Uh, what do you want us? What message do you want to send to him to meet you at a certain location? Yeah, maybe we'll have him meet us in a more neutral location. So, um, maybe back at Rian's parents, so he doesn't know where our coven is, okay. just in case he gets captured or something. <laughs> yeah, I assume he's been over to visit with them. Yeah. Okay. Uh, in that case, let's roll a two dice fortune roll and see what has become of four. What do you mean? Uh, because, you know, stuff has happened. But he's okay. <laughs> that will depend on the results of a two-die fortune roll. Oh, no. Do you want me to roll that? Sure. sure. Okay. you're the one. Uh... Oh, oh, no! no! Formal! Okay. So, um, the result No, we is... take that back. We don't want you to roll for that. <laughs> so, um, I think... You, the uh, plants uh, are able to locate Forval, um, and you expect to get a response, and you don't get one, um, but you do have some other powers, I think, if I remember right, so you can, you can try to get more information from those plants. Um, like, is he dead? With the gather and <laughs> yeah, my commune with plants would is just my general grimoire power, so yeah. So, I if think the plants found him, he's six feet under. 
So yeah, I think you could do a gather information roll of your choice to get information from the plants about what they found when they got to him. Okay, I'll use my consort because that's just what I've been using for that. It just makes sense. <laughs> I think so. Yeah. Um, which will be two die. And limited. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, so it's incomplete information. So um, they tell you that they found him underground and that he wasn't communicative uh, with with them. Um, and that uh, he is in the mines. It is the... Um, it was some of that... Uh, the plants that you grew up the elevator shaft that were able to get in contact with him. You know he's not far from the elevator shaft, but that's really all the information you have to go on right now. Which, that's where the open. It wasn't far from the elevator shaft where the opening that we went through was, right? That's yeah. correct, yeah. That doesn't bode well. <laughs> let's, uh, let's go over there. Yeah, we need to go check on four walls. <laughs> Better get down there, Swift. Yeah. So, how do you want to do that? You have, um, 30... We got a whole bunch of pickup trucks. Yeah. You have 36 Obsidian Council soldiers um, that are guarding that uh, entrance now. We do have that map, right? Of did we, Didn't we see the map of the mines? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Was there another entrance on that map? There was, yes. Um, you, now that you've been to the mayor's office and, uh, you were able to sort of triangulate that information, uh, you know that that other exit leads to that door that you heard getting slammed against in the mayor's, uh, or in the town hall. Great. And it does seem like everybody of importance might be up here at this point. <laughs> we yeah. Need to see if the town hall... I forgot to mention We can that. just, uh, shoot our way through town hall. The, the mayor was also on aboard that uh, first transport. I knew we okay. should have shot that thing there. I okay. say we sneak in and go through that door. <laughs> we can we can give it a go. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see how well we can do it sneaking. Okay, this sounds like a uh, good time for an engagement roll. Uh, what is the type of uh, what is the method and tail you do uh, know I... all about that back door or that side entrance door that you've gone through before yeah uh, if it's a stealth mission then the details entry point and since we have that entry point that might be the best way to go about it mm -hmm. everybody's down for that yeah. Um, well, I'd rather go with loud. But... <laughs> it might get loud. <laughs> yeah, so... I'm willing to try to be quiet at least until then. Yeah, so but this... my hand will be on the pistol. <laughs> uh, so this was all happening around 10 a.m. Uh, just after you all woke up. So it would be the time that the mayor's office and the the town hall is usually occupied. By workers mm -hmm. uh, so getting a sasquatch and a, a asterian uh and a gorgon and a mandrake into the uh side door of that building uh, is definitely going to be uh, difficult yep. but not impossible well can i use vine running and then buff it with enough of my essence to get everybody on my vine running and get us there as swiftly and quietly as possible, because that's... Yeah, I I think that could get you, I mean, that, that would um, get you an easy way through the forest, um, but once you're out there, um, you'd be pretty visible. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to head for that door. Yeah, that was that was probably going to be my best option to get us there unnoticed. But if yeah, if we're going to only get to the edge of the, um... you could probably get onto the roof with vine running. I feel like let's say we can uh, move at full speed vertically. So if you if can, we, mm -hmm. if you can get us to the building, 
My familiar's a skunk. We could literally just have them walk in and blast everybody. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. That sounds fun. That does sound <laughs> fun. Yeah, let's let's go. Do I need to roll anything for the besides popping all that essence? No, and I wouldn't worry about it. I um we'll just say that you're able to blaze the trail through the forest. Um, and it makes it easier for everyone else. Um, so you make it there quickly, and we won't we won't cost you any essence for that. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, in that case, um, Harriet, um, what action do you want to use with your skunk? Butt explosion. Butt explosion. We're <laughs> all. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I don't know what it would be. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't think it needs like to focus, like focus focusing on the group. I don't I think don't it know. needs to like prowl in or anything. You can just basically have it just, you know, walk in through the front door kind of thing. Um, I'm just thinking of like, spring might make sense. Yeah, mm. yeah. Spring, yeah. Spring. I was gonna be like a brawl <laughs> 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 or target maybe. Is this mm -hmm. target? Spring or target could work. But I like spring. Yeah, yeah spring's funny. Okay. Um, I've All the Le Pew. <laughs> two they don't make me bring back that horrible French accent. <laughs> yeah, two dice. Do you want to use any willpower or um, anything else? Well, I'm going to use two willpower because I don't have anything in spring. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I'm concerned at this point and will. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just checking the codes. Okay, yeah, that's it. Uh, here we go. Oh, that's all I needed. Wow. Complete success. Awesome. Ass blast to the max. <laughs> yeah, so um, a uh, clerical worker just walks right out the front door, not even noticing that there's a skunk approaching. Um, and as they open the door, the skunk just goes right in. Um, and do you want to describe what happens? Yeah, Davy just walks in, sees the, the group, does a little elegant turnaround, licks the tail up, and just brays everywhere. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> and yeah, everyone goes running for that side door, because, you know, this the whole front area is cleared out, and the stench just goes all the way through the building. Um, and yeah, they... They all run out through the side door. Um, somebody hits the fire alarm on the way out. <laughs> um, and yeah. Perfect. They, uh, I hear clown car music going. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> <laughs> and they all head to their like cars and stuff and out to the road. Um, and yeah, they're just all out there chatting and, you know, calling people on cell phones and asking them to bring cans of tomato sauce. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, no, you and... need a whole bath full. Yep. If you can't, do not do it. And I think with a six, uh, you are all able to just sneak right in. Um, it's uh, it's quite a smell, but um, other than that, uh, you know, it's not gonna it's not gonna slow you down. I'll give My everybody giant a little taste. <laughs> you see that um, that back door that had been bashed in. Um, has now been boarded up. And you can smell, or Lana can smell those herbs again that were used in the sigils uh, to keep whatever it was on the other side out. You can smell that they've been uh, put back up. Well, we're just going to politely ask them to go away, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're not there to keep you out, so... Um... If you we just, just step right over. Yeah. Uh, so you'll <laughs> just have to <laughs> detach those boards to make your way into the uh, into the tunnel. I could pry them off with my horn. Mm, yeah, sounds good. Yeah, I I think we can take that as as red. Um, get down and and use your horns to pry them off. Um, uh, and yeah, they just get her across the floor. And you can see the benefits of being a horny boy. <laughs> you can see down a big staircase 
you can see pipes that lead um, down from on the ceiling, uh, down about uh, 18 feet into the ground, and, uh, and then uh, on further. And as you step in, you find a big breaker-style switch on the right-hand side, uh, just on the entrance. Do we want to alert everybody we're down here right now, just in case there's something still down here? I'm... <laughs> so it's it's pitch black in the tunnel, and you think that that switch might control the lights. Look it up anyhow. Whether it's lights or alarm, it's going off. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the fire alarm's already going in, in the building, so... <laughs> All right, uh, Levi reaches over and flicks the switch up. It, like, you know, makes a loud slamming noise as it slams into position. Then you see the lights above your head flick on. Then the lights at the bottom of the staircase flick on. And then you can hear lights flicking on from further and further and further away down the tunnel. We pull the lever, Croc. <laughs> <laughs> Once you head down to the bottom, you can see you can see as far as your vision allows you forward. This tunnel literally cuts miles through the earth. And you can see the curvature of the earth. It's that Whoa. far and that straight. Um, oh, this is going to take a minute. <laughs> and you watch as the lights further away from you, flick on, and then the next light about 15 feet away flicks on. It continues that way uh, as literally as far as your eyes can see. There doesn't happen to be a mine cart, does it? <laughs> right, or, ooh, or, Rian, can you can do the Spirit of the Wind to push us forward? Maybe? Would that work? I think, uh, <gasps> oh, I was gonna say oh. that's a once per uh, session, oh. but you actually used Wild Magic. I did. Last time. I don't think I have anything that would be able to get us faster unless we try to craft something. Um, yeah. Well, based on what you know about the map, you think that it's maybe a three-hour walk. So it'd take you till about, uh, let's say, one thirty in the afternoon. Can't have that if Fourville is in need. Mm -hmm. how, how tall was this ton? Uh, it's about 12 feet tall. I could get thunder down here, but that would only transport two of us. Here it could put someone on their back. <laughs> How fast does Harriet run? Yeah. <laughs> so matter how so fast Harriet is, it's how slow is your horse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you've got a great stride, Harriet, but uh, yeah, can't keep up with the horse, that's for sure. Yeah, something you've noticed is that uh, your wild magic has more or less gone unnoticed here. Uh, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, that we were uh, kind of surprised because over the years you've become accustomed to Manhattan and how they treat wild magic there. And, yeah, it does not seem to be the same circumstance here. People mind their own business. <laughs> <laughs> um, so any ideas that a um, empath or a green or a storm could uh, conjure with wild magic? Blow us down the hole with a tornado. Single sense illusion, if I have lesser illusion, could I make something, could that sense be touch, and that just, I make a minecart? <laughs> you could make, uh, you could make it feel real, but it wouldn't be able to push you. Okay. Good, good idea, though. Um, does Levi have anything like, um, uh, auras? Like, um, yeah. elemental, elemental aura? aura. Um, so, I mean, uh, a lightning aura obviously uh, would be a little painful, but um, 
you know, if you wanted to stretch it and go into the, you know, air range. <laughs> I suppose that might make sense for the character. It's still weather <laughs> mm -hmm. related. Uh, so I could attempt that. An aura, however, how are we going to an aura of wind to carry us along? I suppose it works. Yeah. With feet. <laughs> <laughs> an aura of feet. <laughs> Just call it an aura of storm to make it thematic. <laughs> mm -hmm. Awesome. All right. Hermes, grant us your power. <laughs> <laughs> So I shall spend an essence and attempt to summon an element of air from above. Okay. And just have it, like, force you down the tunnel? Yes. Okay. Blow us very violently to the end of the tunnel. All right. Please it's keep your fun. hands and legs inside the vehicle. At all. <laughs> <laughs> your loins! <laughs> I think to get the entire group we should probably spend a little extra essence, but other than that, I think that should be. Um, How much do you think would be likely? One each, or? Uh, no, um, probably two. Um, two. In addition to no. whatever the normal power is. Two in addition, I see. Mm -hmm. Three. And then, uh, is there a role for controlling that? It not does normally? not appear to have a role. Okay. So, yeah, I think we should probably make an action roll since this is a non-standard use. Uh, we'll... Focus, perhaps? Sure, focus makes sense. A use for putting the points in the torch. <laughs> Good. <laughs> awesome. All right, well, um... I will spend a bit of willpower so I can get an extra nine now. Okay. I reckon we don't want this to go sour. Yeah. We have a five. Okay. A partial success. All right, that's not terrible. Um, Successful enough that I'm back in character, at least. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I think for the partial success, what that's going to look like is that you're all going to get bruised and battered uh, <laughs> from the journey. So I should think that's appropriate. <laughs> Um, just, just from being, you know, sort of slammed down the hallway. Luckily, it's it's a pretty much a, a straight shot. Um, but every once in a while, you know, a, a gust will come and get you and lift you up and smack you into the um, pipes above, or ram you against a wall and sort of shave off a bit of your skin as you uh, go down the uh, stone walls. Um, but yeah, I think that's going to give everyone a level one harm of their choice. Okay. Unless you want to do a prowess resist. I have empathetic healing. Ooh. You could do that with everybody. So just uh, have everybody take it and then um, get healed at the end? Yeah. I'm going to an attempt to prowess resist just for the hell of it. Okay. Wait, do you trauma out from filling up your essence or is it just willpower? Um, no, just willpower. If you run out of essence, you start taking um, consequences whenever you use any further magic. Okay. So that would completely fill out my essence if I do that, guys. Okay. So Levi is got a five. So. Uh, so that means it's, not good. it's only going to cost you one essence to reduce your, uh, which means that that's one essence left that Harriet needs to spend. To heal. Does anyone else want to resist? Oh, I can do a. I can spend one essence to just do a warding real quick on myself. Yeah. Uh, so, um, how did you uh, see this in your visions? Know to prepare. Um, maybe just be before I even went to this place at all. I decided just to ward just in case because. <laughs> I'm a little cautious. <laughs> yeah. There's still plants down here. <laughs> yeah, there, there's Ooh. creepy hands with eyeballs that disappear, so. <laughs> I so, yeah, I, 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 I rubbed some salve on myself before I came. <laughs> okay. Sweet. So that uses your ward, and, uh, yeah, you're uh, safe. 
you don't take any damage either. That just leaves Harriet and Rianne that take one point of harm. I think, uh, Harriet, I think Empathetic Healing, I don't and... think it works on yourself. So you might want to resist as well. Yeah, I'm reading that now, and you're right. It doesn't look like it applies to myself, so I will do that. And sorry, it's a prowess versus? Yeah. Oh no! Ooh. Well, you do resist, but it takes a lot out of you. It's going to cost you three willpower to resist. Oh, my fur's getting, like, stuck as I'm going down the tunnel. Yeah. Still bald and patchy. Oh, little yeah, Aww. little bald patches, but no, no actual <laughs> wounds. Sad. Worse. <laughs> well, at least the Grail Club won't want your hide now. Mm. <laughs> Not as much. Yeah, they'll they'll uh, take you alive and wait for you to regrow the hair. Okay. Use this opportunity to get a tattoo in the spots. <laughs> she's like a little lawnmower underneath. <laughs> One that lets everyone know that she's fixed. <laughs> That's terrible. Babe. I love it. Babe. Oh, well, a little aside. Uh, on May 9th, during our session, I will be getting a tattoo mm -hmm. uh, on stream. And uh, we'll have a separate camera set up so everyone can see it as it happens. And we will be voting on what that tattoo is in Twitch chat on the day of. So if you uh, want to be We should part probably of... set it up a few days before so we can give uh, our yeah. artist a heads well, up. We'll have, <laughs> we'll have it down to four tattoo ideas. Um, that So if you have ideas for a tattoo that you want to see on me, uh, then put it in our Discord. Yes, it will Not happen. a penis. Yeah, it will happen <laughs> during the game as I am GMing it. So, God. yeah. So it's going to be a challenge, and I'm. It's going to be interesting. Yeah, so. I'm very looking forward to it. <laughs> Are we going with the general theme, like a Children of Midnight theme, or like anything that they need to gear towards, yeah. just so we don't get ridiculous things? Just like not penis <laughs> a blue rose uh viking mentions yeah that would be really good um we were actually we have a few ideas in uh our discord so yeah if, if anyone wants to hop over to our discord <laughs> um you can see what those ideas are one of them is a vampire the masquerade like onk with uh some crows uh off to the side of it it looks really nice another one is the balsamic games logo that you see in the middle of your screen above the uh, die that says one uh, the BMGC uh, logo another one is of course the Children of Midnight Coven logo um, so yeah those are the three that we have right now yeah they said no penis so a vagina then that's basically, <laughs> no body parts that's basically no body parts. what we modeled um, the uh, balsamic moon kind of, logo yeah. on though so yes in a way just a Giorgio oh, very stylized painting. <laughs> a stylized vulva. All right. So, um, you all make it to the end of the hallway, and uh, battered and bruised, but not broken. Uh, Rihanna is actually the only one that's uh, hurt right now. And, I'm scraped up. I'm mm -hmm. fine. And bloody knees. You do find out that you are, um. You are at, um, the tunnel eventually gives way and becomes a standard part of the cave, the mines that you had seen before. You can start to see where some veins were that they were mining out, um, and you come to another barrier. It seems that you have found the other side of the wooden barrier that you didn't break down last time. And you can see the sigils now uh, in herbs on the uh, inside of this. So if we want to get out, we have to break the things? Yep. You are uh, 
Lana, your your plants that you were communicating with are, are very close. Nearly just on the other side of this wall. Okay. You can also hear radio chatter coming from the other side of the wall. So can I commune with the plants that are out there and ask them and just be like, hey, where's everybody out there? Give us like a a little recon. <laughs> sure. Yeah, what do you want to use for that? I'll use kind of sort of that. All right. <laughs> Would that be gather information? Yes, it's a gathering. Okay. That's standard. Okay. The amount of plants down here is rather limited. Um, so, but you are able to get some information from the plants sort of around the corner. Um, they tell you that, um, they've been sort of using this as a main thoroughfare. Um, they've heard a lot of explosion down here in the last mm -hmm. couple of hours. And are mm -hmm. able to sort of point you in that direction. I say we kind of go see what they're up to, but oh, can, oh, actually, can we? Um, can I send my squirrel Toby to maybe go see what's up? You'd have to break some of this uh, wooden barrier that's blocking you from the uh, from the mine proper. But yeah, um, good. Well, let's get destructive then. Yeah, <laughs> uh, like I, I, look, I look over at Levi like. <laughs> You are hearing some people just on the other side of it, so um, whatever. So you we'd do. have to kill them pretty quick. <laughs> a quiet destruction, just a little bit. <laughs> it's also possible for Veliz on that side of the, uh, 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 on that side of the barrier as well, because mm -hmm. that's what the plants were uh, sort of uh, intimating. So what you're saying is that I shouldn't just charge through. <laughs> I'm just saying it could be dangerous. <laughs> yes. We're dangerous. Yeah. I meant it could be dangerous for Forval. Oh. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It could be dangerous for Forval. Um. <laughs> it depends on what you do, though, obviously. We could uh, pretend to kidnap him. Ooh. I'm trying to think if there's anything little I can do to maybe make a little hole or something. <laughs> he is the size and shape of a little kid. Yeah. I already have Morning Stars uh, double tattooed on. So. <laughs> Somebody said that in chat. <laughs> so sorry, is this the, where we're, we're trying to get into? Is it blocked off? Is it yeah. around the corner? So when you guys first came down into the uh, mines, you found two sections of mine that were blocked off with uh, wooden barriers. Uh, you picked one of them to break down the barrier, and that's where you found one of those uh, abominations. Uh, you have now found the other barrier, but from the inside of the barrier. So to get back out to the mines proper, you would need to break down this barrier. Uh, but there are people uh, with walkie-talkies on the other side of the uh, barrier, and Forval is probably over there as well. How airtight is this barrier? It's not airtight, um, but it's um, it's warded from the inside, um, though not against you. Um, and uh, yeah, not airtight, but there are no. You could probably have like a, a rat or a squirrel or something chew their way through it you know, without too much difficulty. But uh, they can't just, like, squeeze out. Mm. Well, I was thinking more or less using my snake root kiss again to do perception altering. Mm -hmm. To make that, and just literally exude it just from my skin itself, and yeah. just um, see if I can alter their perception enough to where they think something's away from the barrier. Yeah. Yeah, you would need to, you'd need to ha make physical contact with them to do that. Mm. Okay. Unless you um, have another way. Personal projection again? Or is yeah, that absolutely. A no, yeah, it's not. I, a... can, I can hear and see everything through that, so I can literally see if four holes on the, the side and just be like, hey, move. 
Diesel shot, this... I thought you were saying your pronouns were how slash the. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, um, so, yeah, what do you want to do? Do you want to just uh, form a uh, copy of yourself, you know, somewhere on the other side of the wall and see if yeah, you can I get them to, that. like, chase it away? Yeah, I can chase it away, see if Orville's there, and get, like, an idea of the space, so that way, if we do want to go plowing in, we're not going to hurt him. All right, plowing. Let's do it. <laughs> now, what do you want to use for that? My gender. <laughs> uh, I guess. I guess spring again. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Okay, I'm gonna do. Uh, can I take a fate bargain? Because I have yeah. five willpower left, and I'm getting concerned. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's I'm a, gonna pop it's a healthy amount of willpower, especially given that we're very fresh mm. yeah. between each session. Okay, so. Uh, we have collateral damage, unintended harm, lose an item, appear to betrend, be, betray a friend or loved one, offend or anger a faction, start and or tick a troublesome clock. Ooh, I like that one. I think that would make sense that um, they're going to radio it in no matter okay. what, and that's going to start a clock where they start actually uh, rate, you know, uh, doing an actual proper search for you guys. Okay. Um, what do you think? Uh, six o'clock? Yeah. Okay. Is that just going to go up as we engage, or is that just going to... Yeah. Okay. Uh, so we'll Thank just put one you. tick on that six o'clock to start with, and that'll okay. give you plus one die. Alrighty. And away we go. <laughs> Looking forward to this one. Oh, no! That's not good! <laughs> uh, okay. Um, Carrie tries her best and just lets out a soft little fart. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I think um, you send out your double, um, and it rushes down a corridor, and you are trying to use your memory of where... Um, you know where things uh were um and so you have your your double rush around a corner away from where you assume these uh guards or these um obsidian council people are and um he, but the um you run directly around a corner and into a wall <laughs> and then you get lost in the, oh, inside no. the stone of the mine and you get turned around and have a hard time finding your way back out. Um, it is. It does serve as a little bit of a distraction. Um, but, I'm just uh, screaming, I'm lost! And they're just hearing the echo around. <laughs> but we'll say you only gained a little bit of information on uh, the... Um, so they, they call in. There's a really f fluffy Sasquatch down here. But I think it's like a ghost, or maybe it's one of these abomination things, because it just ran right through a wall. Um, and ghost so watch. we're going to raise that clock up to a three clock, or a three out of six. And uh, that's going to put them on a little bit more of an alert. So any future actions are going to be taken at risky. Um Sorry, gang. <laughs> but you do get a little bit of information. Uh, what do you What do you want to know about the people? Do you want to know if uh, Forville was there? Do you yeah, want to know how know many Forville's guards there. were there? If he's right on the other side of the door, <laughs> I do. Yeah, I don't think it matters how many people are okay. in there. Just if he is close to that door, I want to know because if we come barging in, I don't want us to trip. <laughs> yep. Uh, yeah, you see an unconscious Forville as you were running through out of the corner of your eye in a small cage off in one of the corners of the mine. Um, and that's probably what distracted you and, and caused you to run into the wall. Um, right. So he's not on the other side of this barrier. He's not directly on the other side of the barrier, nope. Time for plowing. It is time for plowing because Forville's it... in a cage, no. Plowing. Shall I start plowing? Please, Levi, please. 
everybody in chat, please ask uh, Morningstar to start plowing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I'm plowing through a door like that. Would that likely be a brawl? Oh uh, yeah, it absolutely could be a brawl. Um, I think that makes sense. Uh, just sort of hitting it with the most force you can conjure, like a angry bull. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Let's treat this uh, barrier like a china shop. Mm. So that would, they usually get plowed. <laughs> I was thinking more like a field. <laughs> Me too. That was my first thought. I'm uh, like, we're good to do some gardening. <laughs> all right. That's not terrible. We um, go to five. So we're at only one eight. better than that. <laughs> um, I think this is going to, uh, just you know, tweak your neck a bit. Um, it's going to, uh, yeah, uh, cause you a level one harm. Yeah. He unless, got a splinter. <laughs> it's good to know that my tweaked neck is only level one harm. Unless you want to resist it. Might as well. You know what? I'm going to do it just for the fun of it. Okay. Um, the I, more I get to roll more, then. Yeah. <laughs> I think prowess makes sense. All right. I will attempt to resist the tweaked neck because I didn't have that opportunity in real life. <laughs> that is a six. Nice. nice. You spend no willpower to resist. So, yep, you slam it uh, with your horn, uh, and uh, you feel something sort of get knocked out of place, and then you just twist it back, and... Uh, just grab my horns and <laughs> twist my head. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, the the wall in front of you, the the wooden barrier shatters, and uh, you see that you have caught three Obsidian Council members in uh, full armor and weapons, completely off guard. Um, so splinters of wood go flying toward them, and. They turn toward you with a shocked expression on their face. So should I start blasting, or does anyone else have any better ideas? I've only started blasting. Get in there, Danny DeVito. Start blasting. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to do the most. Well, I'm going to do the most reckless thing possible, and immediately whip out my pistol and fire at one of them. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, I assume that would be a target. Yeah, you're you're pretty close. You're like, um, you know, more or less point blank range to the closest one. Uh, so, so that thing, that shot is going to send him flying <laughs> if it hits. <laughs> yep. It's a crit. Oh, ooh, ooh. Um, nice love morning stars. Yeah. So. Uh, you instantly kill the first one with a <laughs> shot uh, straight through his uh, visor, and you get an extra effect of your choice for the crit. Is the extra effect that someone was standing behind him and got shot as well? <laughs> That's, that sounds perfectly fine to me. Uh, yeah, you catch two of them completely <laughs> off guard, and your uh, revolver uh, bullet goes straight through one, um, misses the back part of the helmet, just goes right up under it, and then straight through the visor of the next guy, and two of them uh, fall over dead onto the floor, um, while the third one is still fumbling for his uh, automatic rifle. Lana goes bravo and throws a rose. <laughs> <laughs> throw a rose out of your hand and then yeah. throw it. <laughs> Lad, it that draw speed there. That's why they call me my <laughs> Nice. All right, anybody else? There's one more down here as well as Orville. Well, let's go. I guess I'm just going to go ahead and um, I'm going to see if I can use Snake Root Kiss and run forward and grab him and just poison him dead. I'm just going to use my three essence for it to okay. poison him dead. Awesome. Um. <laughs> okay. I would guess that's just a brawl, right? <laughs> Sounds good, yeah. All right, let me pop my three essence, which only gives me two left. <laughs> and then, oh my gosh, my. Actually, I'm also going to spend two willpower okay. to give me an extra die because I only have one and I want to make sure I grab him. 
a partial success and a five. <laughs> okay. So for the partial success, um, he is pre he was preparing to um is preparing his weapon. Um, I think when you first grab him, you grab a hold of uh, armored parts, and you have trouble finding a way into an unarmored place to deliver your venom. Um, and it's just enough time that he's able to uh, sort of jack you in the jaw with his uh, the butt of his rifle. Um, but your, uh, your touch gets up under his visor um, and directly into his mouth. Um, I grab so... him around the head like, oh, you sweet thing. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, so I think that's going to be level two harm. Um, fractured jaw, unless you want to resist. Um, yeah, let me go. No, actually, I might just take the harm, to be honest. Okay. Um, or let's see, what's the best way for me to resist? Uh, I think it would be prowess, since it's, uh, uh, yeah, such a physical thing. Yeah, let me, I'll go ahead and resist. Okay. <laughs> yeah, partial success with a whole. Oh, I didn't do the, um the right thing did it. It's okay. Uh, so okay. a four on a resistance roll would be two willpower, if I remember okay. right. Gotcha. Uh, oh, so... now I got two willpower, two essence left. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> uh, so close to traumaing out. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, but yeah, uh, so yeah, uh, that reduces it to level one. Your jaw is not fractured. It's just free. Okay. Oh, and he's dead, right? Oh yeah, he's he is okay. foaming from the mouth and uh, purple veins all over. <laughs> mm -hmm. Sounds good. Very and Joffrey. You see, um, Orville reacting to the gunshot and waking up in tiny cell. Okay, good. He's not dead. Well, he had us worried there. Yeah. Um, yeah, I want to go. You you notice that there are chemical burns on his face. I want to ask him what happened and see what kind of locks we're dealing with while he's, he's talking. He's just clutching his head and he looks still half out of it. Uh, and he says, they, they, they put something stinky all over my face. And next thing I knew, I was I was here. Uh, and I woke up in this little, this little dang cage, and, uh, they came back, and they said they were gonna be nice to me, and then they put that thing on my face again, made me fall asleep. Horrible! Amaldehyde burn skin. Um, what's it called? Search of the Sea. Uh, chloroform. Chloroform, that's chloroform. it. Amaldehyde. Yeah, that, that would that definitely would burn it. your that face. That would burn your face, too, probably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um you require medical attention because I have two first aid kits and I feel bad. <laughs> uh no, aside from the intense headache, um he's probably going to be okay. <laughs> but he is he is locked inside of a, a little cage. Like an animal cage. <gasps> like not even a people cage. Dang. My goodness, he's such a small old gentleman. <laughs> Like maybe uh, supposed to catch boars or something. Well, can we just rip the cage apart? <laughs> What's that? Can we just rip the cage apart to get him out? <laughs> I yeah, think it might Harriet not be. Might be able to pull that off, or or Levi. Yeah, well, I could I have the baseball bat too if I just need to break the lock off. Okay. Yeah. That just be good. careful you don't hit formal. Oh, <laughs> be nervous. You have a baseball bat? I have a baseball bat. And with your Sasquatch strength, I don't see any reason that we should have you roll that. Uh, right. You bring that bat down and uh, bust the lock off the front of the cage, and he's able to crawl out. You're free, my tiny friend. <laughs> with your pet in his head, are you okay? Yeah, Picking him up like a cat, just like, oh. He wait. curls right up against uh, Lana. He only comes up to, like, uh, your your belly button. Aww. He's a very small man. He's a very small man, yeah. 
I'm just going to uh, go ahead. Lacko, <laughs> we need to make sure to bring Forville back to our homestead. Hmm. So he tells you that uh, when he was down here and when he woke up, um, he saw some people that um, were wearing hazmat suits. Uh, they were the ones that were in charge of uh, knocking him out, but um, they were wearing like fancy clothes underneath it. That tracks. Mm-hmm. <laughs> which way did they go? Fingers. Did he mm. see which way they, From they went? Here, there's only one way back, and, okay. and that's uh, back to the elevator uh, just around the corner. Uh, but you've been able to hear as soon as you guys broke through that uh, barrier, you've been able to hear that uh, elevator has been going nonstop, just up and down. Um, so this area is probably crawling with people. Sorry, because you're saying that, where are we at for that clock now? Hmm. Um, let's see. I think we're at four out of six. You guys dispatched them all so quickly they weren't able to give any really concrete information about you to their superiors. Oh. Are there radios just like on the ground yeah. and they're still broadcasting so we can hear their side of the radio? Yep, you sure can. We could always, if we couldn't, pass it off to four of them. I'm sure you could operate one of them oh. things. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, four will take a, a radio and just any information that he gets, he'll pass on. Good four. <laughs> um, I'm gonna go ahead and do a one die fortune roll, just see if anything comes out immediately. Yeah. Uh, no, do nothing. Orville comes out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm gay, guys. Sorry. Good for him. <laughs> <laughs> um, We're so proud of you, four. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, um, it's just, you know, troop, troop movements and things like that. It's nothing particularly useful. Um, although you do hear some stuff about, you know, uh, X number of people on level one and, you know, X number of people on level four and things like that. But it's, it's too hard to tell exactly. Like, you don't know what, if level one is the top level or level one is the bottom level. So. And they're not communicating anything if they're, like, transporting anything? Not currently. And they're still uh, trying to figure out what's going on around here, just to speak. Um, you do hear um, a prepare for detonation on four. And then uh, about 15 seconds later, you hear from uh, a not extreme distance an explosion. Uh, and it rocks the uh, area that you're in. Um, and you can follow that down to where you can be assured there are more people. So are they trying to close the mine? Or are they trying to use dynamite inside of the mine to mine farther? Well, I reckon we won't know that until we go and check it out ourselves. Just the direction that. from which you were hearing the um, explosion does make you think that they are expanding the size of the mine okay. in a very, very unsafe way. Yeah. Seems to me they're probably trying to free this thing up, get further in so they can access these horrible monstrosities. Um, so, what do you want to do to get? Do you want to get closer to where the action is? I, it's like I feel like if we get closer, we're gonna risk horrible again. But we do. I feel like we do need to know what's going on. We, yeah, could, we could send, send him send... Uh, back up the tunnel. Yeah. Yeah, I could uh, put him on a uh, thunder's bank. <laughs> Slap that astral oh yeah, mind. back down the the uh, extremely long tunnel. Yeah, that makes yeah. sense. Yeah, that's probably this. I mean, nobody in the town uh, hall is going to think anything weird of him being there. Just yeah. put him in your saddlebag. And <laughs> oh. <laughs> Little head just popping out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are you? Does that sound good to all of you? Mm hmm. All right. So, yeah, we'll want just... him around here at risk. Orville should not suffer the consequences of our actions. 
<laughs> oh, uh, Harriet, do you want to heal him of his uh, facial wounds? Heal him up. He's taken level have... one harm. Level one harm. Okay, so I'll do one little. What is it? I think it's just one essence to knock oh. out a level one harm. Plus one, or plus I, and four E. Oh, so it's four. Okay. Uh, I guess I can't do that now. I only have two left. Uh, but I do have. We have one. First aid kits. It, it shouldn't be um, four to heal one level. What does empathetic oh. healing say? Concentrate oh, sir. plus. Uh, I dash four E heal oh. all of the individuals. Oh, so it's between one and four. Yeah. Moreover, you can go over, but it's going to start hurting you. Yeah, so uh, concentrate plus one essence, and you can do it all the way up to four essence. So if somebody oh, okay. was instantly, like nearly instantly killed by something, they took fatal harm. If you got to them fast enough, you could heal them uh, for four essence. But okay. he's only taken level one harm, so you can heal him for one essence. Okay, I'll look for one essence then. And since it's a uh, concentrate, um, and you're not in controlled, you're currently in risky, that is going to take a focus roll. Okay. If you want... You Do it could... as an action? Yeah. If you want, you could heal... Um, uh, Lana and Rianne as well at the same time for two more essence. I only have one more after that. Gotcha. Tick. So I can't really do okay. that. Um, but I do have first aid kits if that's possible in like a less. I know we can't do it right now. Yeah, they... it takes a lot more time. But yeah, Orville should be Sorry, relatively just... easy. Looking at the wrong spot on my sheet. Sorry. <laughs> there we go. Awesome. Okay. So, yeah, um, Orville's uh, face wounds and his headache completely clear up uh, nearly instantly. Um, and I think you you start to feel, like, the, the pain from his wounds um, mm -hmm. on your face, um, and you start to get an intense headache as well. Um, but those are going to pass relatively quickly. So for the moment, you have, a, like, a little temporary level one harm. Um, but it'll go away as soon as it's uh, caused some problems for you at least once. Okay, so I'll put that in then just so, um, like, headache? Yeah. Alright, so Thunder goes running off with Porvel on its back, um, back down the tunnel toward the town hall. I'd like to get some use out of that horse. <laughs> it's going to have to turn it into glue otherwise. <laughs> Thunder glue. Thunder glue. <laughs> Spicy. Right, so um, we're only at four out of six on that clock, so they are still not aware that you are down here yet. So, um... Still only at risky. Okay, well, let's see if we can't get a little closer to figure out what's going on. With, like, a group action? Yeah, with Sneaky Snake. That sounds good. Who wants to lead that? Somebody with a little I bit have... of willpower? I have willpower, and I have one prowl. Nice. So I could do it. Okay. I ain't got a clue about sneaking, but <laughs> I'll do my utmost. All right, everybody good with a prowl? Yeah. yeah. Are we allowed to take fey bargains on group actions? Sure are, yeah. Yeah, so I got the method, so... Okay. I'll take another one of those if I can. Now you can roll, you can roll zero dice. Um, it you just roll, it rolls two and takes the lower of the two. Okay. That way you don't have yeah. to <laughs> um take an automatic consequence. Okay. Well, then, so I just I put in just zero though. Exclamation point zero. Yep. 
Okay. Sometimes it feels like good role play to just fail at something you know your character is going to <laughs> fail at. <laughs> All right, the leader got a two. But there's Lana one partial. Got a four. <laughs> Levi got a three. Oh, that's a, a three. <laughs> and oh, was that everybody? Oh, I missed uh, missed Harriet. Okay, and Harriet got a three as well, or a two. So uh, we got a partial success in there. Um, How much willpower is that? Rion, that's going to cost you four willpower in total. Ooh. Um, that is a very expensive group of. It was. Uh, but you get a partial success. So I think um, your footsteps and your movement is enough to trigger one of the guards that you are able to sneak past to be to call in some sort of unusual sounds that he can't um quite figure out what they are um but it sounds like there might be someone else down here so he calls that in it's not enough to sort of trigger a uh, search but it, they're getting they're getting real close um, Don't we should go find him and gaslight him <laughs> yeah <laughs> Can we grab one of the walkies while he's trying to like call? And it since we're witches, you know, it's gonna mess it up to where it just statics over. Yeah, so um, you're able to sneak past that one and even a few others. But um, yeah, if you want to, uh, let's see. So if you want to resist that uh, negative consequence, then yeah, whoever wants to resist that. Um, like, uh, let's see, your description was that you would just reach out and try to um, cause his radio to malfunction? Just purposely malfunction his radio, yeah, just because I think just us touching it messes it up, doesn't it? It can, yeah. Um, it's it's kind of random. You could, oh. you could use that walkie-talkie for a little while, and until you had to roll dice, it might work, but... I mean, um, darling, if you want the walkie-talkie messed up, I can miss that walkie mess up. Yeah. <laughs> Um but yeah, I think that seems like a resolve uh resist. So you would uh roll resolve. Basically mm -hmm. you reach out from the shadows and try to influence the uh walkie talkie to uh malfunction. Let's see then. I I actually have two in resolve, so nice. we're... Right. Oh, I am now traumaed out. Okay, um, so I think that um, you are successful. You are you are able to get his walkie-talkie to stop working. So that's going to take one back off that clock. So it's still you're still at four out of six. Um, and um, but let's see. I think maybe um, the battery explodes near your hand um and you get like battery acid on your hand um and you end up like crawling down into a sort of tiny mine shaft and the rest of the group is prowling fast and they kind of accidentally leave you behind and you're like trapped in that little uh, section and you're so you know weakened and stuff by that that you're uh, you're kind of stuck there. That is right. absolutely horrifying. Yeah. And there are like three obsidian council guards that are like patrolling the area, but luckily you're sort of compressed in this really small crevice, and they can't see you there. Well, it. So Since I do have. Once you're trauma okay. out, you can't take any action. Okay. Um, I was just like, I was wondering, oh, can I get something to hide me? <laughs> yeah, so you are, well, you are hidden, mm -hmm. and the rest of the group can come back and, like, pick you up uh, when they finish what they're doing. Um, but for now, you're sort of trapped there, and you don't have the energy to do anything against the people that are uh, trapped, have you trapped there. Yeah, I just curl up close, and Toby's just worried about me sniffing my face. <laughs> oh yeah, he's he's uh, standing guard in front of you, uh, laying oh, there on the guy. floor. <laughs> right. 
and the rest of you, you uh, are able to sneak past all those guards and get to uh, an area where it looks like they have set up and are conducting all these explosions. And you see three people in manacles standing in the center of the mine shaft. And all three of them have their manacled hands up in the air and have a bubble of energy projected above them holding the um, mine shaft to prevent it from collapsing. What in tarnation are they doing to these widgets? That's uh, two men and a woman, and uh, the um, Obsidian Council guards that are around don't seem to be paying them any attention whatsoever. Just sort of treating them that, like they're pillars in the middle of the room and going about their business. And you can see the scientists in hazmat suits are down at the extreme end uh, investigating the area where the explosions have just recently happened. Um, you can see a big plastic, uh, like, it, the whole area is sectioned off with a big plastic, um, like, like a clean room, sort of. Um, and that's where all the scientists in hazmat, hazmat suits are. And you were all sort of, um, you know, have found a little side area to uh, hide yourselves in. I reckon if we could uh, abscond with them witches there, we could probably burn the bastards. Yeah. If you could just get them to stop casting their spells that they're working on. Uh, it might cause the whole place to collapse. It's a... Well, I could kill them, but I don't reckon that's the best solution. <laughs> um, can I do a commune with spirits? And I would like to commune with the spirit of this mountain and okay. see if it is, um, if it can give me any, any information about possible uh, collapses if we take these witches. Okay. So, yeah, talking to the mountain about, like, the local structural integrity. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, sure. What do you want to roll for that? Um, I guess it would be like a gather information roll. Yeah. Um, good. I would probably do focus because I have to focus my energy to finding the spirit, talking to the spirit. Yeah. Sounds good. Okay. Okay. Okay, you get good details and follow-up questions if possible. Um, <clears throat> uh, so the spirit of the mountain seems very upset about what's going on. Um, but you also feel like it has two voices that are talking to you, and they seem to be, like, contradicting each other. Okay. Um, you, you can't quite get a... a a feel for which one's the one you should listen to, but one of them is very angry about what's happening, and the other one says that this is inevitable. So, um, which one do you want to... You know, I'm going to go with the angry one. <laughs> okay. Um, it seems to think that um, the tunnel is safe for the moment, even without the uh, spells, but... It, after a few more explosions like this, that probably wouldn't be the case. Okay. And from what you're seeing, it looks like they are moving more explosives in. Going to get okay. ready for another... Going to get ready for another uh, 
explosion soon. So the soldiers are moving explosives then? Mm -hmm. Yep. How many soldiers are there right now? Uh, there are four on patrol, and then there you're seeing like sort of a steady stream in and out, bringing in equipment and explosives. Um, okay. So at any given time, maybe ten. Hmm. <laughs> That's what I was going to blink. How fast can you shoot 10 people? That's only five bullets. That's how many I got left. I don't even have to reload. <laughs> well, you, you also have uh, some pretty powerful uh, lightning powers. Lightning can kill uh, a lot of people very quickly as well. And yeah, can... but it don't feel as good as the 44. <laughs> <laughs> and you can ricochet it around and kill people that aren't standing Back to back. You ever look a man in the eyes as he pulls the trigger on a forty-four? <laughs> Lightning just don't compare. <laughs> Says the storm witch. <laughs> I got a question for you, Levi. Can you conjure thunder as well as lightning? You mean the vibration? Well, I reckon I could, yeah. Or at the very to... least, I'm sure I could conjure Thunder back. He could storm about. I'm wondering if you want to do a group sway with me. I can do a lesser illusion of one sense. And if you're able to make thunder sounds, I could do some crumbling rubble, perhaps, from the sky, from the top of the cave, and just yell out, like, cave in! And then we see if we can get everyone to scatter. Pick them off individual. Well, we could do that. Seems like it would be a bit more complicated, though, than simply uh, wait until they fire off some more explosives and then dealing with these three witches, burying them all at once. It's up to you. You want to go crashing in their guns a blazing? It's up to you, Levi. So... I just want to do the most violent thing possible. <laughs> You uh, you see some of the uh, scientists behind that plastic barrier um, start to come back toward uh, where you are all hidden. Um, not directly toward you, but past you. <clears throat> and they seem to be uh, chattering about uh, that people can withdraw the explosives because uh, they've hit pay dirt. You hit what? Hey, dirt. Uh, they hit. They found what they were looking for. Okay. <laughs> 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 um, and you see um them pulling a little um trolley that has a uh, box that they've put, you know, whatever it is, rocks or whatever, uh, into, and they're uh rolling that past you um, as you see people start to gather up the materials that they brought in and heading uh, and everybody seems to be heading back toward the elevator. What, what are they doing with the witches? Uh, they um, tell them to hold the area and after everyone's out the witch that's furthest into the tunnel can drop theirs, then go past, and then the next witch can drop theirs and go past, and then the final can drop theirs, and they can all leave together. It seems like they had it kind of rehearsed already because they sort of just nod at them, and the witches seem to know what they're supposed to do. Do they look like they're in their right mind? Um, what what ability do you have? Um, to they they look they look very coerced. Uh, they're in manacles. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Um. So everybody else is left, and they're the last ones. If you're willing to, if you don't take any actions, then yeah, um, they will. I think be. we should just jump out and start shooting. Take this box for ourselves. I mean, I'm not opposed. I want to know what this box, what they, what they wanted. You could, um, 
cause some kind of commotion that causes the cart to overturn and see what's in it. If you have a way of doing that without exposing yourselves, that would be uh, the best, but... <clears throat> um, there are... Yeah, yeah, I do, and that's the worst part. Is I don't want to use it because that's breaking character. <laughs> <laughs> there are conduits that uh, run throughout the entire you know system. They end uh, near where you guys are at um, because the rest of the stuff has only recently been opened up with explosions. Um, but the uh, the electrical conduits do run up to here, which is what's running the lights. Mm -hmm. So what you're saying is I could tap into the circuit and steal all that power from us. You sure could. You could um, use a little uh, power surge to knock over the cart if you wanted to, or any number of I other things. That more is violent a... things. Well, <laughs> the violence can come after, but True. if I were to use energy control right about now, I could potentially not only disrupt the car, the car but put us all in a little bit of a extra darkness here. Mm, which... That's true. Yeah, you could overload the whole system if you wanted to with your lightning powers. What do you want to roll for that? You still uh, is, if I'm using a target, mm -hmm. that's a, or if I'm using energy control, that's a target. Nice. It says something so. you're also. Good at. It says between two and four essence. I I don't know what adding more essence does, but I guarantee you, I want to use four. <laughs> Uh, so it's um, the amount of power that's running through the conduit determines how much uh, essence you have to put in. Um, I'm going to say, since this is sort of like an uncontrolled power source where they could run it uh, a significant distance, I'm going to say um, it's, it's only going to cost the minimum of two. Well, two makes sense. It's not as reckless as I'd like to be, but... <laughs> uh, basically, um, the more essence you have to put in, the it's because there's less power already there. And since there's a significant of power, amount of power already there, you don't have to put in as much effort. Because all you're doing is well, taking control of what's there. It says also that I get to direct it at a target. Yeah. So if you want to direct that against, like, the control box, um, or if you want to direct it against, you know, uh, an opponent, you could do that. I was thinking of directing it at the person pushing the cart. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I would say there's enough power there that if you wanted to split that, you could have it do both, you know, knock over the cart and take out the power, you know, but you... Just remember that if you do knock out the power, um, it's you're not going to have it at your disposal in the future. That might be messy. <laughs> might be better to overload and take out the person pushing it. Mm -hmm. Well, you know what? That's not the reckless option. Let's do both. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and Lana, uh, or as Ellen, uh, be considering what trauma you want your character to have uh, for traumaing out, because that uh, that gives them an yes. experience bonus in the, in future sessions. I was already thinking I want to be permanently disfigured and have oh. scars from this. Oh, from damn. The from the explosion? Or from the mm -hmm. battery acid? Oh, unhealable wounds. Yeah, I just I'm just basically scarred now. <laughs> Cross my hands and face. Aww. Um. Okay, so uh, Morningstar, what's the intention? Well, the intention is to pull the power out of the system mm -hmm. and fire it at the control box and the individual pushing the cart. Okay. Awesome. And I am going to use a bit of willpower for this because it seems like something we want to be as powerful and messy as possible. Mm -hmm. Okay, 
I think with uh, a six, you'll get both. With a five or, or less, you'll, you might not get uh, everything. You... All right. Well, fingers crossed for a six. Eh? <laughs> we got a six. <laughs> Uh, Man, the dice love you so much. Yeah, they do. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, yeah, what does that look like? Well, it looks like the lights start flickering as Levi puts his hand up. And the energy starts coursing towards him. The lights just cannot sustain quite the consistency that they've been running at. And eventually... It gets to the point where enough energy loads into his body and he shoots it out both hands, one towards the control box, turning off the power of the entire area, and one towards the poor individual pushing that car. <laughs> okay. Um, the lightning bolt hits the individual pushing the cart from behind the cart first. Um, it courses through uh, his shoulder, through the hazmat suit, um, and uh, you just watch as uh, he just starts to, to bloody and cook uh, through the hazmat suit and then falls over to the side just as the lights cut out. Um, oh, don't that smell sweet? <laughs> yeah. The cart, you watch it topple over, and then uh, everything goes dark. Um, and you see where the box, uh, would have fallen, um, so if you want to, uh, pick up what's there, uh, and then basically it's chaos and pandemonium after the lights are out, uh, as everyone is making a push for the, uh, elevator. Oh, also, if I can, I'd immediately like to fire my rifle, or my, my pistol. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just to, like, uh, to ward all Terrible. the people that are running away. Doesn't matter who it hits, it doesn't need to be aimed anywhere, just absolute terror. <laughs> okay. Yep, you, you fire a bullet, and it's all these trained Obsidian uh, Obsidian Council members, they, they know that that was not one of their weapons that just fired. So they're even more scared now than they were before. <laughs> um... Who wants to go scoop up the box, and then do you guys want to try to go back out through the uh, opening that you made? And exit? I mean, I'm the big, yeah. so I can try to get it. Okay. All right. They're going to get a blurry picture with their night vision cameras of just a Bigfoot <laughs> lumbering out, <laughs> grabbing the box, All right. and wandering you. off. <laughs> I think we should probably make one more group action for you all to get out with the stuff that you got, as well as and getting, Lana, and as well as picking up Lana on your way back through. I got the box oh, on one shoulder me. and Lana's on the other shoulder. <laughs> grab me! I'll carry Lana. All right. <laughs> I do want to. Um, I just say... hold on to the horns of dear life. <laughs> Rian? I do want to say to these witches that if they want to be free, they can come with us. Okay. And, um, yeah. Come with me if you want to live. Uh, yeah, pretty much. Roll a one die fortune roll on you. Okay. I want to see if any of them take you up on the offer. No. Um, so I was doing one is going to take you up on the offer regardless, two if you got a four or five, and, and all three if you got a six. So, um, yeah. One of them follows you out. Like, okay. puts their hand on your shoulder, and you hear the manacle clanking um, mm -hmm. as they are uh, leaving with you. And then, okay. uh, what do you all want to do as a group action? Everybody except Lana. To get out of here unseen, unheard, and well, It's going to be box. pretty bloody hard for them to see us at this point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hearing us might be another matter. I think once they get, um, once they sort of all... Um, once they all bottleneck at the uh, elevator, they're going to be, like, turned around and flashing their flashlights around and stuff and, and trying to see who's back there. But if you guys go back out the way you came in, they won't. there's no chance they'll see you. So, actually, if you... So they're not going to see a terrifying, blurry Bigfoot. 
not unless uh not unless you guys want to do a uh, intimidation kind of uh, thing <laughs> as your uh, I do final action. Stop and just do one of these. <laughs> <laughs> as your final action on the way out. Oh, yeah. So basically, if you're just escaping, um, I'll treat it as an automatic six. Um, okay. If you want to try to do something else on the way out, then uh, we'll need to make a roll. Do we need to do anything? Kill more of them, or some. Of them. We haven't actually killed anyone yet. Well, Wait. you killed three. That's not enough. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure we'll get another chance. Well, if you're so sure, <laughs> I could save some of these bullets for later. Heck, you can just wait and make the elevator crash with them. Mm. Now there is an idea. <laughs> yeah, speaking Although of that, it's not you... very fun. You do hear a generator that kicked on, but it's not enough to power any of the stuff down here because of the box you burned out. Um, but it is enough to power the elevator. It well, it's really a straight line. Burn out that box. <laughs> all right. Well, um, then you all make it back to your covenstead. Uh, Lana. Um, I assume is being uh, tended to with your first aid kits and everything, and sadly, you just can't can't fix her. Her snakes are very angry. Um, I got little in plants into your gouging holes, though. Like the gouges on your arms are like the Venus flytraps now. <laughs> Uh, when you get back into the light, you have the box. Harriet has the box in her hand. Do you want to open it up? Yeah. Harriet? Okay. Uh, you, What's in the box? You open it, and you find a... Fetus, sorry. <laughs> it was horrible the whole time. <laughs> Horrible <laughs> eggs. Uh, <laughs> you, you find a half dozen uh, rocks that look like rubies. They're glowing with an eerie red light. Hey, I reckon this will get us a hell of a lot of chat. <laughs> 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 All right. I'll drink to that. Yeah. And we'll call it there for the evening as you all head back to your covenstead to safety. Oh my gosh, struggle princess. Yes, we need to give one of Lana's snakes an eye patch now. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Nice. So cute. laughs> you got pirate snakes. <laughs> love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Go the full mile and just give him a little pirate hat too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> now you're cosplaying. <laughs> I need fan art of this now. <laughs> <laughs> that and like Harriet, like cradling horrible, like little. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. So when you guys get back to the surface, uh, Forval has uh, cleared out the area for you. And uh, he helps you um, find your way back out into the woods without being spotted by any of the people in the um, at the town hall. Oh, good man. A good bean. He probably wouldn't have been able to get away with that if it weren't for the fact that you had fixed his face. He would have been too uh, concerned. So yeah, very nice. Pats for Forville. <laughs> <laughs> and pats for Harriet. Yeah, Pat's pretty. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so normally at this point we would do experience and everything, but we're uh, handling that all uh, ex experience and downtime very differently for this mini series. Next week will be the finale. So um, it is about already heartbreak when thinking about it. Mm. <laughs> Having so much fun, but I am eager to get back to Night Sky Sight. Mm -hmm. I am too. Yeah, uh, we have such a vivid uh, world there in Manhattan, um, and uh, we're going to have a very uh, 
one of the most beloved NPCs uh, of the first season coming back in the first episode of uh, Night Sky Sanctums. So, and but... dying. <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> hey, I can't now. even think of who the most beloved NPC is. Yeah, that, that's that's exactly what my hope was. <laughs> it's all the children and the... Uh, <laughs> you guys have so many um, coven pets at this point. You've got <laughs> 11 children and the two trolls. Well, they don't call me mother for nothing. Mm -hmm. Or oh, at least <laughs> mother for nothing. <laughs> so let's go around and let everybody know where they can find you on the internet. They want to see more of you. We'll start with Morningstar. Well, they do want to see more of me. They always do. <laughs> That's why you're so, not your shirt today. Yes. <laughs> well, you know, I still follow Twitch's terms of service. Uh, Very much so. So, if you want to see more of me, you do. And there is a photograph where this is worn even lower on my social medias. You can find them at the underscore Scytherian on Twitter and Instagram, all these Scytherian on Facebook, we post fantasy and fashion photography for your viewing pleasure, all edited by the sublime, well, Megan. my dear <laughs> Megan there, shall you go next, darling, introduce yourself. I see you have no option now. <laughs> yes. I don't mind having no option. <laughs> As the Scytherian said, I'm Megan, and I'm the photographer and editor for the Morningstar content. I don't currently have my links up for my personal content, but I hope to do that soon in the future for commissions as well as potentially editing tutorials. So if you want to see any of the work that we're doing, you can go to any of the previously mentioned Morningstar links. All right. As they want. And well, you can find me at a zill anywhere. And um, and right now I'm kind of doing a little funny on TikTok under Goddess Azalewin. If anybody wants to go in and say some very wrong Pokemon facts on any of my posts, that would help greatly. And it would just we're having a bit of fun there. But yeah, we're um just always up to something creative. And if you search Azalewin, you'll find me pretty much anywhere. <laughs> yes, please do. Uh Anya. <laughs> Yeah, I'm Anya. I'm half of the writing and creative team at Balsamic Moon Games Collective. Uh, we have, uh, yeah, made this beautiful game that you guys got to witness this evening. Um, you can find me on Twitter at Anya T. Moore, and you can find me on Instagram uh, under a Menagerie Nest. And I am here on Fridays playing Animal Crossing sure. for your viewing pleasure. <laughs> and we have fun. <laughs> Very much. Uh, it's a great chat stream and Animal Crossing stream, so if you have things you want to chat about or uh, Animal Crossing stuff you want to know about, great place to be. Uh, I'm Gavin. Uh, I'm Gavin the GM on Twitter, and we also have a uh, at Balsamic Games on Twitter. Uh, that's the official uh, company account. Uh, we also now have a Mastodon uh, dice I think it's dice. <laughs> dot, dice. Team backslash balsamic games. Um, just in case Twitter goes under, uh, <laughs> as everyone is worried about. Uh, everybody was saying, "Oh, I lost you know X thousand followers today because of Musk," but um, I've gained. Five... That explains why I've been hemorrhaging for. Uh, my God, I thought everyone was bothered by my overly sexualized post yesterday. No, absolutely not. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Uh, Maybe hot and bothered. <laughs> but not bothered in a bad way. Yeah, I won't take it personally then. I gained, it's I've just gained Elon eight, Musk's fault. I've gained eight <laughs> followers over the last day, so I don't know what everybody else's emerging followers. It is possible. Uh, so yeah, dice. Dot, I think it's dice.team backslash balsamic games. Anyhow, we also have a lovely Patreon, which we have uh, our first Patreon uh, patrons that are going to be listed in the stream credits that we'll play just after this. 
All of our uh, social media links will be there as well. Tomorrow I will be doing the second episode of GMing from the Ground Up, uh, where we will talk about Session Zero. So if you are not a part of our Discord yet, um, and you want to be a part of the uh, of those sessions, uh, come join our Discord. I will place the link in chat real quick, um, because it's a good time, and uh, you can influence the direction that our game goes, uh, because we are eventually going to build a campaign, and we're actually going to run several sessions of it on our Discord. Um, so please join us because it's going to be an extremely good time. Uh, do it, yeah. do it. Join the chaos. Uh, it's, it's, it's certainly, certainly worth being worth... in the Discord. It's just the most wonderful space to be with a wonderful community. Yep. Super safe space. Awesome. Uh, good for venting and everything. Uh, great memes. Uh, and just <laughs> an overall good crew there. Um, we have movie nights. Yeah, we had a movie <laughs> night we last do, yeah. week that went extremely that well. Uh, we watched Hellbender. It was absolutely fantastic. And uh, yeah, looking forward to doing those again on Saturday nights. Um, I think we generally have been doing them at 8 p.m. So. Uh, I don't think there's anything else specifically. Mm -hmm. Oh, if you want to see what the campaign um blurb is like the uh exciting um ideas that we have about the campaign we're going to run uh from gming from the ground up go to the uh looking for group panel on our discord and you'll see a big like three paragraph section about uh the kind of game we're going to run and see if you want if you're interested in being a part of that so uh with that that said I think we will bid you all a good night until tomorrow or next week or Friday. <laughs> <laughs> one of the above. And one of the above. Or oh, all. Oh. Please, <laughs> please all. <laughs> also, Azale one streams on Twitch as well, so yeah. make sure to give Azale one a follow here as well. <laughs> all right. It won't be too long till I'm doing it as well. We're so. very excited for that. <laughs> Join us. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Have a good night, y'all. <laughs>